Mike, we now know who the little boy found in Alvarado Park last week is and how he got there. But now many people are asking, how could this happen and why? Joining us this morning is Ezra Spitzer it's with the New Mexico Child Advocacy Network. Ezra, I want to thank you so much for sure. coming in. Sure. Now, one of the things that we have found is that Tiffany is telling us two different groups, family and friends, had told her that she had to leave the home because they didn't like the way she was treating this child. My first question is, legally here in New Mexico, do we have to report abuse? You know, that, that's a good question. And, and in New Mexico, it is actually state law that any person um, who suspects child abuse is required to report that abuse. We call that a uh, mandated reporter in New Mexico. Are these people possibly facing prosecution? What's How common is that? It, it, is, a, it is a possibility that they could be prosecuted. Um, it, it, it tends to be a difficult crime to, to prosecute, but uh, there's definitely the possibility that they, they could be held accountable. Let's talk about the warning signs. There were a lot of people around this family, around this woman and her child. What are some of the things we should look for? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, child abuse, it, it, a lot of factors go into child abuse. And, um, you know, there's, there's physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. Um, there's also child neglect. Um, and often the people closest to the child will, will be able to sense a, a change in behavior in that child um, first. Uh, you know, in, in terms of, of physical abuse, you know, certainly injuries that are, that are, uh, don't have a consistent explanation uh, can be looked for. Sometimes there can be risk factors associated with a parent's behavior. You know, there can be um, drug use or mental or emotional illness um, or even transience can sometimes play a factor. Um, essentially, though, the, the, the big takeaway from this story is if you suspect it, it should be reported. Um, you know, the systems in place can't work if, if the abuse is never reported. In this situation, she had really somewhat cried out for help because there she was moving house to house. That's often a warning sign you had talked about. So what could these people have done? What should they have done? There's a 24-hour there's a day, seven, uh, seven day a week uh, hotline that, that they can call to report the abuse. Um, the reporting can be anonymous. Um, you don't have to identify yourself. And, and we all struggle um, to, to pick up the phone and make that call. You know, it's hard. Our, our instincts sometimes are to, you know, to mind our own business, to, to let to let families sort out its own problems. But I think this is an important case to remind us that the consequences of that can be grave. And um, so it, it's easy to report, and there are systems there to help determine if those, you know, if those risk factors are present, and, and there's help for families out there. So, Okay, we have a, several phone numbers for you. First, if you have an issue, call 311. That is the city hotline, well, it's the city helpline here in Albuquerque. Also, we have another number for you, and this is a state number, and it's 505-841-6100. But also, Ezra, you want to give us an 800 number to call. Yeah, there's also 1-800-797-3260, and that's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's, it's anonymous reporting. and. Thank you very much. And, of course, we'll have those on krqe.com as well. Thanks again. Some yes. great information.